It's time for the Preet is on with Dave Preet here on 92.1 The Team, WCKR Hornell. Here's Dave Preet. And welcome everyone to the Preet is on another week down in this COVID-19 period. But right at the end of the tunnel, we're starting to see it as some businesses locally have opened up and all across the state they're starting to open up. So some good news for people as well as the business owners. On today's show, we have some pretty awesome guests lined up. We're going to, I'm actually going to interview two students, two seniors from Canisteo Greenwood. And, of course, you know, with everybody's senior year being disrupted by COVID-19 and students not having the chance, you know, to finish out their senior year like they deservedly should, um, this is going to be a, a great time to talk to a couple of seniors from Canisteo Greenwood and see what they're up to. And they're actually going to be coming up here in just a few minutes on the show, and I'll introduce them uh, when the time comes. We'll also have Paul Vecchio, Athletic Director for Alfred University. And then in the final segment, I will have Sheriff Jim Allard coming on, and we are actually going to talk about the current situation here in our country with the social injustice, police brutality, and how some of the local law enforcement agencies are working together to address the issue and hopefully prevent situations like what occurred in Minneapolis uh, just about two weeks ago from, uh, from occurring again. So without further ado, I want to introduce two seniors from Canisteo Greenwood uh, High School, and one of them, Allie Smith, is an outstanding athlete who has been involved with uh, the soccer program at Canisteo Greenwood. Um, she has played for the soccer team um, since ninth grade, and she's also on the varsity swim and track teams as well. And then I also want to introduce this year's valedictorian for Canisteo Greenwood, Zach Greenfield. Zach, also on the varsity swim team. So let me introduce them right now, Ali, Zach, Welcome to the show. I'm glad you guys could make it on. Hi, thank you. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, so let's start, just so I, uh, you know, can prevent you guys from talking over one another. Let's start with you, Zach. Zach, you, as I mentioned, you're the valedictorian for the varsity swim team. Tell me what's going on with you um, after graduation. Now, I know graduation is going to be a little bit different for you guys this year. It's, it's going to be done virtually. It's the first time that I can ever remember a school, you know, or any school doing a virtual graduation. Um, So that being said, what what do you have going on? What are your plans for for your valedictorian uh, speech that you're going to make at graduation? And and where have you decided to go once you graduate? As far as graduation goes, um, I think I'm going to focus my speech on what we can take from this situation because, as you said, it's so unprecedented. And then after graduation, I'm going to Northeastern University in Boston, and I'm going to study mathematics there. That's great. And now with mathematics, what is your plan to do, um, you know, after you uh, graduate your program in college? What what career are you looking to get into with mathematics? Uh, I'd like to go to grad school and then move into academia, research position. Okay, great. I'm sure your teachers are going to be happy to hear that one. Now, they are. Being, being valedictorian, obviously, is a tremendous honor. It does carry some responsibility with it, um, you know, to live up to certain academic standards. What, tell me about your, your work ethic, your workflow, and how did you get to where you're at this year being named valedictorian? I think one of the most important things in the high school in becoming valedictorian has just been the fact that I actually do enjoy uh, the learning part of school. Even then, motivation can be hard a lot of the time, so I find it really useful to focus on routine for work that doesn't interest you. Oh, that's great. It's a great attitude to have, and one that, you know, in this day and age with a lot of distractions between technology and social media and everything, it's really hard to keep that focus. So that's pretty tremendous, Zach. Allie, I want to move over to you now. You, as I mentioned, you're you're an outstanding athlete, a two-sport uh, athlete at Kennesfield Greenwood for the for the Redskins, but 
academically, you also um, have some pretty impressive stats as well. Um, where where do you plan to go to college, and what are you looking to do with your career upon graduation? Um, well, I plan on going to Rochester Institute of Technology and getting a, a, a biomedical engineering degree. Okay, that's awesome. Um, are you are you looking to get into a, a specific field in bio, biomedical? Sorry, biomedical engineering, or um, is it just something that you're looking to start with, and then you know you want to move into possibly a graduate program? Well, I've been like thinking about things like prosthetics, but I'm sure it'll change once I get there and see like all the options I have. Awesome. So that's some pretty impressive stuff from you guys. I'm sure, you know, your your family, your parents, your teachers, your classmates are all very proud of you. So let's talk about your classmates a little bit. This has been, and, and I like the word that the deck is an impressive year for seniors all around, not only here in the area, but all around the country, just really trying to piece together the last few months of your senior year. You know, you guys had your um, your spring sports season taken away. You're having, you know, your graduation, the, the live graduation taken away. Plus, you know, those those last few months of um, building those memories with your classmates kind of taken away with the whole COVID-19 thing. Have you guys, what have you been doing to keep in contact with your classmates? Um, you know, have you been able to to do any type of bonding activities and, and anything like that that's really tried to, you know, keep the, that whole senior year experience together. And, Allie, I'll let you go first on that. Well, actually, just yesterday, Max and I both went to a fish funeral for my English class because our class fish died. So, like, <laughs> we try to keep in contact with everybody in our, like, East classes mostly, but, like, the other classes we have a senior group chat for, so... I am sorry to hear about the, the class fish. That, that's sad. Um, what, what was the fish's name? I'm just out of curiosity. Uh, his name was John Caster, after a William Shakespeare's character in Much Do About Nothing. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, again, sorry about the fish. How about you, Zach? What have you been doing to keep in contact with some of your classmates and, and you know, get, try to make the senior year as memorable as it could be? Um, a lot of us have done digital communication, like video calls after classes and things like that, because that gets a lot of communication, but it can't substitute everything. And also, we've had quite a few times throughout the year so far, well, we're do, we'll do parking lot coffee dates, and I find those fun where we can pull up so we can see each other from our cars and just talk that way. That's really cool. And, and that's, that's a great, you know, thing that you guys are able to do that, because at least you're, you know, you're still being able to piece together, uh, you know, some kind of camaraderie among among the senior classmates. So, before we, before I let you guys go, what words of inspiration, what parting words do you have for some of your underclassmates, those maybe those juniors who are going to be entering their senior year next year, and you know some of the other um, kids coming up through the ranks? Is there any words of wisdom that you guys have, Zach? I'll let you go first. Just to really every student going in, I, high school is really about exploring your interests and making sure that you enjoy the experience. So one mistake I made that I would say the advice I want to give is not to really get too stuck into doing anything specific and to really explore all your options. Oh, that's great advice. How about you, Ellie? Um, well, since we all got our year cut short, like just to do everything with like all you have, basically. I know, like, with sports, I never thought I, like, would be done last year. So it just basically try as hard as you can when you know, like, because you don't know when you'll be done. That's more great advice. And live every minute, you know, you can because, you know, the situation that we have was very unexpected and came upon us very quickly. And I'm sure, you know, really kind of threw a wrench into to what a lot of you guys were trying to accomplish, you know, before the end of your senior year. So I really appreciate having both of you on the show. It's been a pleasure. Good luck to both of you. Congratulations. As, you know, you guys deserve all of the, you know, accolades and adoration that you can get because this, you know, this is something that um, it's unfortunate, the situation, but it sounds like you guys are making the best of it. So 
good luck to you, and, and thank you both for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Bye, guys. Bye. Coming up next, we will have F, the athletic director at University, Paul Becchio. Mullen Factory Direct Flooring and Almond is open, and they want you to know that they're following health and safety guidelines in order to keep everyone safe during this crisis. Mullins also understands that you may have a flooring project with a deadline that can't wait, like apartment renovations, new construction, an unexpected catastrophe. Whether you need it installed or you do it yourself, they'll do their best to make sure they take care of you with safety in mind and get that project done on time. They have over 500,000 square feet of in-stock flooring, and they offer special financing to qualified buyers. Mullen Factory Direct Direct flooring in almond and this local sports show here on 92 one the team is brought to you in part by Rhonda will see spring is here now's the time to buy or sell your home when choosing a local real estate agent choose someone with two decades of experience Rhonda will see has been helping people like you find their new home for over 18 years call Rhonda will see at 607-382-4539 or email Rhonda at Rhonda will see at howardhanna.com do you lead an active lifestyle? Are you trying to reach that next level in your fitness or active lifestyle? Stop in the Next Level Wellness in Hornell. Next Level Wellness offers CBD options that help promote muscle recovery and regrowth. Their CBD products are the perfect addition to pre- and post-workouts. CBD helps reduce inflammation, allowing you to recover faster from workouts. If you're ready to step up your training or take your game to the next level, then stop in the Next Level Wellness or shop online at nxlevelwellness.com. Next Level Wellness, 10 Seneca Street, Hornell, or call 607-385-3188 for more info. Have you written a book? You can become a published author with Dorrance Publishing, the nation's oldest publishing services company. Countless authors have trusted Dorrance for nearly a 100 years to bring their book to the market. Our professional team will edit your text, design your book pages, and create an appealing, eye-catching custom cover. Plus, our authors benefit from a custom book promotion marketing campaign that makes your book available where people buy books, like Amazon and brick-and-mortar bookstores. So make this free call right now to claim your free free author's guide to publishing. Don't wait another day. Take one step closer to realizing your dream of becoming a published author and seeing your name in print. You've already written a book, so the next thing to do is make this free call right now to Dorn's Publishing and get your free guide to publishing. Call right now. 800-482-8399. 800-482-8399. That's 800-482-8399. It's amazing what a simple refresh can do to make a difference in your home. And Lowe's is here to help make it happen. Start by shopping our new wall tile selection with hundreds of mosaics, including modern blacks and blues. Marble mosaics starting at just $7.98. And finish off your project with dual scrub and stain-resistant Valspar Ultra Interior Paint Plus Primer starting at just $24.98 a gallon. Whatever updates you need to make today and every day, do it right for less. Start with Lowe's. Offers valid through two nineteen dollars US only. Let's say you just bought a house. Bad news is, you're one step closer to becoming your parents. You'll proudly mow the lawn. Ask if anybody noticed you mowed the lawn. Tell people to stay off the lawn. Compare it to your neighbor's lawn. And complain about having to mow the lawn again. Good news is, it's easy to bundle home and auto through Progressive and save on your car insurance. Which, of course, will go right into the lawn. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company, affiliates, and other insurers. Discount not available in all states or situations. And welcome back to the pre is on segment number two. And I want to thank once again our two students from Canisteo Greenwood, Zach Greenfield and Allie Smith for coming on the first segment. And again, good luck to both of them as they get ready to enter the their college and professional careers. At this time, I want to introduce, speaking of college, from Alfred University, the Alfred University Saxons Athletic Director, Paul Becchio. Paul, welcome to the show. Dave, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. It's good to talk to you. You too. Now, Paul, you you and I go quite a ways back. I actually did a summer internship for you when I was a student at Alfred University. I believe you were the Sports Information Director at the time. Um, and, and I learned a lot from you. Um, you. I know you had left AU for, for a few years after that position as sports information director. You went to University of Buffalo and then came back 
um, a few years ago, and, and you can, uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't know how many years ago, but a few years ago to become athletic director at AU, uh, where you've been ever since. And, uh, you know, you have a really impressive resume, and, and AU, of course, very popular, especially here locally, you know, with the sports programs. So as athletic director, just for listeners who, who really aren't aware of, of what the position is or what you do, explain to me a little bit about what an athletic director does. Well, first off, Dave, um, we're both showing our age in, in, in referencing that first stint that we had together because that's uh, <laughs> going on about 27 or 8 years now probably. Um, yeah, it was quite a long time ago. I remember, yeah, I appreciate that uh, maybe the absence from that time has made it seem better, um, but I appreciate those kind words. Um, you know, it, it's interesting, Dave, because I get this question a lot, particularly from relatives that I don't see very often. You know, they, they, you know, they, they get me pulled aside at a family reunion, and they're like, okay, so we know you're the athletic director. What does that mean? You know, what, what do you do? And, uh, you know, it's, it's funny. It's, it, it, it's not always easy to explain because, you know, I, I think one of the things that's both interesting about the job and, and I think the thing that, that's always kept me sort of on my toes is, um, it, the job can be different seven days a week, 365 days a year, in the sense that you're, um, you know, I oversee a staff of about 65 folks, um, and not all of those are direct reports to me because, you know, a number of those um, employees are assistant coaches that report up to, you know, head coaches and the like, but ultimately they're all under sort of my watch, and as you can imagine, when you start to deal with, you know, those kinds of numbers of, of, of people, um, everybody has varying needs and, and issues and, and, and things that are going on at any given time. And, and of course, you know, I think if, if you are doing this job well, you, you've got to be, um, you've got to be prepared and, and ready to help uh, your staff at, at any given moment, you know, achieve the things and, and, and uh, you know, accomplish the things that they're working on. Um, I would say, you know, in general, the, the one thing I always say, I think the most important thing that an athletic director does is is hires good people. Um, because I've always been of the opinion, you know, ultimately we have 19 NCAA sports days, and I've got, um, I think, 13 coaches that oversee those because obviously we've got men's and women's swimming that has one head coach and, and our track and field programs, which are, you know, um, multiple programs that have one coach, but at the end of the day, you're as good as those people are because they're the ones who recruit the student athletes and they're the ones who have the biggest impact on their experience. And I cannot tell you how important I think the hiring process, or if you're lucky enough to inherit, uh, when I came to Alfred, I was able, you know, I, I was fortunate to inherit some, some really good coaches as well. Um, you know they're they're going to make you look really good, um, and and unfortunately, you know sometimes and we read the stories every day about head coaches that are making their athletic director look pretty bad. Um, so I would say you know when I prioritize um, my job, I think the people that I'm surrounding myself with as head coaches and and, and immediate administrative staff, um, and how we're dealing with the needs of our student athletes is probably priority one. So Coach Rankle, your head football coach, was on our show about three weeks ago and was talking, you know, about um, the upcoming season and, you know, the, the, the time and effort and the amount of, you know, work that he and his coaching staff put into to all the preparation. One of the things he did talk about was the recruiting process. Explain to me the recruiting process, and not for any particular sport, but maybe just for the sports program in general, where, you know, how difficult is it, um, if at all, to pull students from, you know, recruit students from different areas throughout the country? Where does the majority of your students come from? And, and what, you know, what kind of, for lack of a better term, I guess, sales pitch can Alfred University make to students looking to come in and, and join the athletic program? Yeah. Um, well, um, you know, I, you spoke to a, a phenomenal recruiter in, in Bob Rankle. Um, you know, our, our, you know, the lifeblood of any successful athletic program, um, is, 
you know, is recruiting, Dave. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know any coaches that are so talented that they can take, um, you know, less talented athletes and consistently win with them. So it all starts with recruiting. Um, and I'm fortunate to be, um, you know, to have the opportunity to work with an amazing staff of, of recruiters. And I, I think, you know, when I look at what our, you know, how our recruiting has developed, um, you know, this is my eighth year. I'm wrapping up year eight here at Alfred as the athletic director and then 11 years in total with the three years that I had spent here um, in the 90s. Um, the one thing that I would tell you, Dave, is that we have really expanded our recruiting reach, and that's, that's due in, in large part to the fact that we've been given more, um, you know, more budget dollars to work with. Um, because you've got to have budget dollars to support. I mean, unless, if you're going to go outside of, you know, the immediate drivable areas, which, you know, that, that's obviously a lot of northern Pennsylvania and, and you know, New York State and, and maybe even, you know, eastern Ohio and things. But once you, you know, if you're starting to get out of those areas, it, it costs money um, because you're, you're now traveling and spending, you know, overnights or you're flying somewhere and, and um, we've gotten that support to do that. And I think what we have seen, particularly probably in the last, I would say, three to four years is, um, you know, we have student athletes from Texas and Colorado and Florida and California and New Mexico um, and, you know, you know, all over the country. And I think that's two things. It's a, it's a tribute to my coach's ability to get out and want to be hungry to identify student athletes all over the country. Um, but also to some specific majors that Alfred University has that allows us to recruit on a national basis. And that starts, obviously, with ceramic engineering and our engineering programs in general. But, you know, Alfred University has the best ceramic engineering material science um, program in the country um, and, you know, probably as good as, as most anywhere in the world. We have a world-class art and design program. Um, you know, we've, we've really expanded the things that we're doing in the sciences. Um, we have lots, lots more of our students now coming in for pre-med or pre-vet, um, you know, taking, you know, biology and, and chemistry and, and some of those, um, you know, majors that will eventually allow you to get into medical school or, or vet school or whatever it might be. So, um, and obviously, I, I feel really strongly about the education that Alfred University offers. But I think, in particular, some of those um, programs that really separate ourselves from a lot of our peers are the ones that, if you want to get an athlete to come from Texas to Alfred, New York, you know, if they're studying communications, they've got to pass probably a thousand schools that have communications programs. Um, they're probably going to be looking at something more specific than that to come you know, three-quarters of the way across the country. And that's what I think our coaches have done a great job of identifying, um, you know, those student-athletes that are, are specifically interest, interested in some of Alfred's really great academic programs. And um, it's exciting to be able to reach beyond, obviously, New York State, although we're always going to we're always gonna live in, in not only New York State as our first base, of recruiting, but, you know, really Western New York and Central New York, because that's, that's our home and we'll always draw lots of students from that area. You know, I, I live locally and I attended Alfred University, as I said in the beginning, and I think some of us local people kind of take it for granted, but I've heard people who have gone to Alfred University as students and even some of the alum that I talk to who are from different parts of the state, different parts of the country, really, really appreciate what Alfred has to offer and, and just having such a small community, you know, that's, that's very um, laid back and very uh, like family-like atmosphere. So I'm talking to Paul Vecchio, the athletic director, at Alfred University. Now, Paul, one of the big challenges that not only your program, but programs all over the country have been facing is, you know, the, the shutdown of, the schools, which also, of course, means a shutdown of all the sports programs due to COVID-19. How have you been dealing with that, especially with um, some of your senior athletes who, you know, really were, were, I'm sure, excited to play in their final sports season this spring? And, and what's on tap for the fall? How are you preparing for the fall? Do you have any safeguards in place just in case, you know, there's a chance that sports might not be able to come back in the fall as well? Yeah. 
Well, I got to tell you, Dave, it's, it's probably, you know, I don't think there's any doubt that um, it's the it's the most challenging thing that I've gone through as an athletic director and, and really as, as someone who's worked in athletics now for 28 years. Um, there, there's really no comparison. I mean, certainly there are individual events that I've gone through um, as, you know, as, a, as an administrator in collegiate athletics, but nothing as prolonged and as... Um, challenging, you know, I, I think is probably just the best word I could use um, to watch our spring sports programs, um, you know, lose those seasons, um, particularly in the moment, um, in those first couple days when we watched everything, you know, the NBA and then um, obviously, you know, the NHL and, and everybody else just, you know, and, and then, the you know, the, the men's basketball tournament and women's basketball tournament and in uh, the NCAA, you know, as we saw those things scuttled and, you know, that, that initial recognition that, that this was going to be the end of, of, you know, sort of the, those seasons was pretty crushing. Um, I want to give um, high marks to the NCAA, um, which, you know, you do this long enough and it's not always, uh, you're, you don't always agree with a lot of the NCAA uh, decisions and things that happen. But I, I really want to compliment the NCAA for the actions that they took both at the time, which I think were clearly appropriate now that we've seen the, you know, obviously the, how widespread and, and incredibly uh, damaging COVID-19 has been to our country, um, but also the fact that they awarded those seniors, you know, that year back. And we're, we've got so many of our spring sport athletes, softball, uh, track and field, lacrosse, that are going to come back next year and, and have the opportunity to almost kind of do a redo um, on, on their season. So that's, I think, really exciting for them, and I'm, I'm really happy for that. As it relates to this fall, Dave, um, I'd love to tell you that we have an ironclad plan in, in place, um, but, you know, really right now what it is is it's, it's a whole lot of scenario, scenario planning, um, and it's, it's really been, you know, we're probably going on, I would say, a solid month to six weeks of, of planning, um, not only at the university level, but within the Empire 8, working with, you know, the member schools of our conference, as well as the NCAA, getting guidance from the NCAA. And I think this has gone from, you know, boy, we might not be able to have students or, or sports back at all this fall to, it's looking cautiously optimistic to where now I think we, pr- we feel pretty strongly that we are going to have students back on campus and we are, you know, doing everything we can to ensure that we can play sports again this fall in some way, shape, or form. Um, and, you know, I, I feel pretty strongly about that happening. But the unknown in all this is, you know, until we – really get people back and we're able to test the protocols and test the scenario planning that we've done, we really don't know how it's all going to go. And I would say as somebody that works in athletics, and I think, Dave, you can appreciate that from having been an athlete in your day and, and having been around it, you know, we like to have game plans. You know, we, we really like to have strategies and, and plans that we feel really good about. I think with COVID-19, there's so much guesswork still in terms of of, of what this is going to look like. And, and frankly, it, it, it makes all of us, I think, uneasy at a certain level about, um, you know, whether we really, because we, we've never done this and we don't have a playbook to turn to. So, um, but it won't be for lack of, you know, effort, thought, and, and process um, because we're doing all of that, and, and we've been doing it for, for quite a while now, and we're going to continue to do it right up until we potentially get our athletes and, and, and students back on campus in August. Well, uh, unfortunately, the, the time here has run out in this segment. I would love to keep talking to you about AU athletics. It's, it's been great having you on, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm with, you know, everybody else. I mean, the sooner the athletes can get back on the field, the better. Uh, really looking to, you know, forward to some AU football, you know, this fall. I know Coach Rankle was really excited about the upcoming season. And, you know, we'll just keep our fingers crossed that as the, the weeks and months go by, you know, things will improve and, and, you know, your athletes will be able to get back out there on the field. So, Paul, 
Thanks again for coming on the show. This is Paul Vecchio, the Athletic Director for Elvis University. And listen, let's have you on again as it gets closer to the fall season and you can give us an update sure. on how the uh, fall program is looking uh, as you know we get maybe a couple weeks out from the season. Thanks Appreciate again, it, Paul. Yeah, it's My pleasure, pleasure having you on. Always. Take care. Yep. Okay, thanks. You too, Paul. Paul Vecchio, Alfred University Athletic Director. We'll be back after the break with Sheriff Jim Allard as we're going to talk about some of the social uh, injustice and program go- uh, issues going on here in our country. And we'll be back after the break. Mullen Factory Direct Flooring and Almond is open, and they want you to know that they're following health and safety guidelines in order to keep everyone safe during this crisis. Mullins also understands that you may have a flooring project with a deadline that can't wait, like apartment renovations, new construction, an unexpected catastrophe. Whether you need it installed or you do it yourself, they'll do their best to make sure they take care of you with safety in mind and get that project done on time. They have over 500,000 square feet of in-stock flooring, and they offer special financing to qualified Buyers. Mullen Factory Direct Flooring in Almond. In times of economic uncertainty and chaos, your money means nothing. You may not even be able to get it from your bank or ATM. And the money you do have in the stock market will go down and down. What you can bank on is gold and silver. Gold and silver have been a reliable and trusted form of currency for thousands of years. Gold and silver have never been worth zero, and typically gold holds its value during economic turmoil. Call the gold hotline now and learn how to protect your money and your assets with gold and silver. And learn how to set up a new IRA or roll over your current one into a gold-backed IRA. Protect your money from the next market crash with gold and silver. Call now for your free gold guide. 800-557-7921. 800-557-7921. 800-557-7921. That's 800-557-7921. Are you over 50? Would you like to get up to 33% more income in retirement? Then call now for this free book, Annuity Do's and Don'ts for Baby Boomers, from a leading financial firm on maximizing your income in retirement. That's right, free. This free book reveals little-known truths about annuities in simple-to-understand terms that will help you make the right choices before buying an annuity. And it's free. As a bonus, we'll also throw in a free annuity rate report, summarizing the rates and benefits from financially strong insurers. That's right, annuity do's and don'ts for baby boomers and annuity rate report, both absolutely free for calling today. 800-430-1891. 800-430-1891. 800-430-1891. That's 800-430-1891. Producers have the appropriate licenses for the products they offer. Increased income is possible using strategies suited to your goals and may require buying multiple annuities and holding them full term. And welcome back to The Pre is On. Thank you again to Paul Vecchio, Athletic Director from Alton University, for coming on last segment. And before we get to our uh, next two guests, I want to promote the Joel Orion Show, which comes up right after mine here on 92 on the team, beginning at 10 a.m. and going until noon. Coming up on Joel's show, you will have Dr. Harry Edwards, a sociologist and civil rights activist, got his Ph.D. from Cornell University. Also, David Vanterpool, who played college hoops at St. Bonaventure University just up the road, went on to become an accomplished player over in Europe, was an assistant coach with the Portland Trailblazers from 2012 to 2019, and is now an assistant coach with the Minnesota Timberwolves. And last but not least, the NL Rookie of the Year 1983, who would go on to be an eight-time Major League Baseball All-Star, a four-time World Series champ in 86, 96, 98, and 99, a two-time Silver Slugger Award winner in 88 and 90, the NL Home Run Leader in 88, lots of accomplishments there, Spent time with the Mets, Dodgers, San Francisco Giants, and Yankees throughout his 17-year playing career. Now spends his time as a minister, and he happens to be yours truly, favorite player growing up. He was the reason I wore number 18 when I played sports. That's Daryl Strawberry, and I won't be missing that uh, interview that Joel will have with Mr. Strawberry. That's on the Joel Orion Show coming up right after mine here. A 92.1, the team at 10 a.m. So I want to introduce at this time on 
the studio conference line. We have two special guests who are here to talk about some of the the uh, you know unfortunate situation going on in our country right now that was provoked by the killing of George Floyd um, by by a police officer in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And we're going to talk to Sheriff Jim Allard and Hornell Police Chief Ted Murray. And I want to welcome both of you to the show. And thanks for coming on. Thanks, Dave. My pleasure, as always. <laughs> so, Sheriff Allard, let's start with you. Uh, you know, obviously an unfortunate situation that, you know, really could have been avoided and has now led to protests and riots throughout the country. And, and it's been an issue that really has been um, pressing here in the country for, for several years, but has really now come to a head with everything going on. Tell me a little bit about, you know, your feelings about what's going on, any message you want to send to the community regarding law enforcement, and what steps are being taken at the county level to better educate your police force and, and your officers on, on how to prevent situations like this from happening. So when we look at what happened in Minnesota, uh, we see a, a, a tragic situation, uh, use of force that probably never should have happened in the first place from everything I'm seeing. And it, it is a tragedy uh, across the board. I don't care what side of any fence you're on. Um, anytime I see what looks like a police officer uh, committing a crime, it, it breaks my heart. And, and I can tell you that here in Stabenn County, we invest a ton of training to make sure that we have some of the most professional officers in the area. And we do a tremendous amount of community outreach and community programs so that we really have our finger on the pulse of what the public is thinking in our area. And I think there's a really big disconnect between uh, more rural areas and more urban areas in what the shared experience is of policing in those two areas. And uh, I think that here in Stabenn County, you know, in every agency, we have people that are volunteer firefighters. We have people that are volunteer EMTs. We have people that are little league coaches. We have people that are town council people. And they're really invested in their community. They're a part of their community. They're not separate from the community. And for my personal belief, when we have our police departments that are not representative of their community, I think that's where the disconnect becomes very apparent. Yeah, and Ted, in the Horn Elk community, you know, you guys had, there was a, there was a peaceful protest um, yesterday afternoon, Friday afternoon, on uh, Broadway Mall in Hornell. Um, people came out, and, and from my understanding, they all sat and, and read books and, and read uh, literature that were written by African-American authors. A very peaceful act. But around the country, we're not seeing that in some places. We're seeing very violent protesting, and, and it's really, um, you know, sp spread all across the country. That being said, what's your response to, you know, the peaceful protests? What, were you there during the protest? And if so, what did you tell the protesters that might help them to, to better, under, you know, understand or, or feel more at ease when, you know, when talking with law enforcement officers? We actually had a, a, a really peaceful one down at James Street Park, and then it was downtown. And myself and the captain walked with the crowd, and, and we walked throughout the downtown area and ended up across from the YMCA where, uh, where some speeches were given um, by some uh, uh, local people, some African-American people that wanted to, to, to speak on the topics. And uh, it was a, I tell you, it was a really uh, some powerful speech, speeches, and, uh, you know, as a, as a chief of police, and I'm sure Jim agrees with me, we, we always have to continue to educate our, our officers and change what we're doing. And, and what I really get from a lot of this is that uh, we, we probably need to listen more to the minority communities. And, and what I intend to do uh, going forward is, is to have a, a board of, of African-Americans in, in our community 
that can kind of tell us from their perspective what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong in law enforcement. And I think that's a very, very valuable thing to do, and I think it's, it's a good time to, to probably reflect upon that. Yeah, absolutely. And do you think more education or, or even uh, maybe to a, to a further extent, mental health um, background checks or assessments are, are needed to be done when onboarding, you know, new officers or if there's any warning signs or, or red flags, you know, for people that are currently on your, on your force? Do you, do you feel that that need to be taken to address any of those um, potential issues or, or uh, you know, red flags that may come up, um, you know, with people on your force? And uh, Jim, Ted, I, I'm not sure either one of you can answer that one if you want or both. Well, you know, we're, can... not, we're not perfect. Oops. Go ahead. And we're not perfect. <laughs> we're not perfect as far as as police officers, and we should recognize that. But, you know, I, I can certainly say that, that the people that I have in my, in my police department, we do, we do a tremendous amount of background before we hire someone, and the people that we have working within our departments um, are, are certainly uh, uh, the top notch of, of, of police officers. I can say that about them. I, I, I trust every one of my officers to go out and do the right thing. Um, as an administrator, though, certainly we have to keep keep a watch and and make sure that the uh, the policies and procedures are, are adhered to, and that our that our department does uh, the things that they're supposed to. But uh, there's a tremendous amount of of training that we do on a regular basis uh, to address all of those of all of those things uh, that that will reflect upon us when we're out there in the community. Jim, did you want to add anything to that? Just that it's not an easy proposition to become a police officer. Uh, they have to pass a civil service test and then score in the top three for us to even look at them. Then they have to pass a physical fitness test and be above a 50 percentile on a, a standardized test in, for us to even start looking at them for a background. And I know uh, the background process at our place is they complete a an application which is uh, twenty some pages and swear to its veracity. Then they go to a uh, psychiatrist in Rochester for a full day for a full mental health background and assessment. Then they go on a polygraph to compare what we received from the psychiatrist with what's in their packet, and then they get an offer of employment. And with that packet, we have an investigator that goes out and uh, digs into every detail of their home life that they've alleged and and their background and their schooling and everything that's in that. So um, when you look at the folks, especially in this area, becoming a police officer, it's a pretty monumental task, and it affects our ability to recruit drastically and lend uh, when we do hire somebody, as Chief Murray said, uh, we're pretty certain that we've got the right candidate for that job. And there have been ones that we've uh, looked at that we haven't hired after the psychological. I can think of two specifically where the psychologist or psychiatrist said, no, I wouldn't recommend these people, and we didn't hire them. But we are talking with Sheriff, Stephen County Sheriff Jim Allard, and Cornell Chief Police Ted Murray. And before I let you guys go, just one more question, because with everything going on, you know, I, I, I don't under, I, I think some people truly don't understand that the work that a police officer does, and, and especially when they're put into certain situations, you have to, you know, react quickly and, and you know, accordingly. And you guys have a very tough job, and, and, and all of the, you know, the officers in your force have a very tough job. Um, you know, unless you've walked a day in your shoes, I really don't think people understand what a typical day looks like for, for you guys. But with that being said, do you think now with everything going on, it was, you know, the, the, some of the, the sentiments towards or about police officers, not only here locally, but also across the country, does this put like a big target on your back? Is it something where you guys now you need to, 
look out for each other more than, you know, say you did before? And, and what kind of safeguards do you have in place to, you know, to protect your officers from um, being put into, you know, uh, potentially dangerous situations? Um, you know, we're constantly, you know, look, looking at, at those particular risks, and, and I think it's going to be tougher and tougher, as, 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 as the sheriff alerted to, uh, in regards to recruiting people because of, of these negatives that are out there in regards to, to police officers. I think it's going to make it more difficult for us to get uh, really good officers and, and, and recruit officers. Uh, but, you know, we don't want to be the victims either. And, you know, and it, it is a tough job, but when we, when we sign up for it, we know what we're getting. And, uh, um, you know, I, I think that, uh, again, uh, although, although we can complain about it, um, I think that uh, uh, what we need to do more than that is to go out there and, and function at a higher level, and that's what we intend to do. Sure. If you want to add anything? To uh, yeah, I, I agree with Chief Murray wholeheartedly. I, I think that we have to view this challenge as a challenge, and we need to take this opportunity to move forward in a way that helps us deal more effectively with those folks that feel disenfranchised, but also helps us streamline and, and better our policies, procedures, practices, and protocols so that we don't end up in this situation again nationally. Well, I appreciate both of you coming on the show and, and giving your perspective. And, you know, I want to thank both of you as well as all of the men and women on your force for everything that you do. Stay safe and, and you know, keep protecting our communities. I know, you know, unfortunately one or, you know, or two bad apples don't um, or shouldn't, um, reflect the hard work of all the other officers across, you know, across our country. So thank you again, both for, for coming on and, and spending some time with us. And, uh, and I, you know, I wish you all the best and, um, and stay, stay, stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. And you also. Thank you. That again, that was Hornell police chief, Ted Murray and Steuben County Sheriff Jim Allard here on the pre-design and we'll be back with our final segment in just a few moments. Mullen Factory Direct Flooring and Almond is open, and they want you to know that they're following health and safety guidelines in order to keep everyone safe during this crisis. Mullins also understands that you may have a flooring project with a deadline that can't wait, like apartment renovations, new construction, an unexpected catastrophe. Whether you need it installed or you do it yourself, they'll do their best to make sure they take care of you with safety in mind and get that project done on time. They have over 500,000 square feet of in-stock flooring, and they offer special financing to qualified buyers. Mullen Factory Direct flooring in almond. This local sports show here on 92 One The Team is brought to you in part by Rhonda Wilsey. Spring is here. Now's the time to buy or sell your home. When choosing a local real estate agent, choose someone with two decades of experience. Rhonda Wilsey has been helping people like you find their new home for over 18 years. Call Rhonda Wilsey at 607-382-4539 or email Rhonda at rondawilsey at howardhanna.com. Do you lead an active lifestyle? Are you trying to reach that next level in your fitness or active lifestyle? Stop in the Next Level Wellness in Hornell. Next Level Wellness offers CBD options that help promote muscle recovery and regrowth. Their CBD products are the perfect addition to pre- and post-workouts. CBD helps reduce inflammation, allowing you to recover faster from workouts. If you're ready to step up your training or take your game to the next level, then stop in the Next Level Wellness or shop online at nxlevelwellness.com. Next Level Wellness, 10 Seneca Street, Hornell, or call 607-385-3188 for more info. Have you written a book? You can become a published author with Doran's Publishing, the nation's oldest publishing services company. Countless authors have trusted Doran's for nearly a hundred years to bring their book to the market. Our professional team will edit your text, design your book pages, and create an appealing, eye-catching custom cover. Plus, our authors benefit from a custom book promotion marketing campaign that makes your book available where people buy books, like Amazon and brick-and-mortar bookstores. So make this free call right now to claim your 
free author's guide to publishing. Don't wait another day. Take one step closer to realizing your dream of becoming a published author and seeing your name in print. You've already written a book, so the next thing to do is make this free call right now to Dorn's Publishing and get your free guide to publishing. Call right now. 800-482-8399. 800-482-8399. That's 800-482-8399. It's amazing what a simple refresh can do to make a difference in your home. And Lowe's is here to help make it happen. Start by shopping our new wall tile selection with hundreds of mosaics, including modern blacks and blues. Marble mosaics starting at just $7.98. And finish off your project with dual scrub and stain-resistant Valspar Ultra Interior Paint Plus Primer starting at just $24.98 a gallon. Whatever updates you need to make today and every day, do it right for less. Start with Lowe's. Offers valid through $219 U.S. only. Let's say you just bought a house. Bad news is you're one step closer to becoming your parents. You'll proudly mow the lawn. Ask if anybody noticed you mowed the lawn. Tell people to stay off the lawn. Compare it to your neighbor's lawn and complain about having to mow the lawn again. Good news is, it's easy to bundle home and auto through Progressive and save on your car insurance, which, of course, will go right into the lawn. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers. Discount not available in all states or situations. And welcome back to the pre is on here in our final segment just a couple of minutes left, so I just wanted to thank all of the guests today that were on the show. Ali Smith, Zach Greenfield, student, the seniors from Kennesaw Greenwood who were on in our first segment, Paul Vecchio, the Alfred University Athletic Director who was on segment two, and then, of course, Sheriff Allard and Hornell Chief Police Ted Murray in our last segment talking about everything going on with all the police brutality, social injustice, and, again, uh, Officer Murray oversaw two very peaceful protests in the Hornell area the last couple of days. So good to see that people were peacefully protesting in Hornell compared to what we've been national news. So that wraps up this segment. We'll see everyone next Saturday, 9 a.m. right here at 92.1 The Team. Coming up next, the Joel Orange Show. And again, make sure you stick around for Joel. I know I'm going to. Daryl Strawberry, baseball legend on Joel's show coming up in just a few minutes. Stay safe, everyone. Stay healthy. I'll see you next week. I'm out. Mullen Factory Direct Flooring and Almond is open, and they want you to know that they're following health and safety guidelines in order to keep everyone safe during this crisis. Mullins also understands that you may have a flooring project with a deadline that can't wait, like apartment renovations, new construction, an unexpected catastrophe. Whether you need it installed or you do it yourself, they'll do their best to make sure they take care of you with safety in mind and get that project done on time. They have over 500,000 square feet of in-stock flooring, and they offer special financing to qualified buyers. Mullen Factory Direct flooring in almond this local sports show here on 92 one the team is brought to you in part by Rhonda Wilsey. spring is here now's the time to buy or sell your home when choosing a local real estate agent choose someone with two decades of experience Rhonda Wilsey has been helping people like you find their new home for over 18 years call Rhonda Wilsey at 607-382-4539 or email Rhonda at Rhonda at howardhanna.com do you lead an active lifestyle 
Are you trying to reach that next level in your fitness or active lifestyle? Stop into Next Level Wellness in Hornell. Next Level Wellness offers CBD options that help promote muscle recovery and regrowth. Their CBD products are the perfect addition to pre- and post-workouts. CBD helps reduce inflammation, allowing you to recover faster from workouts. If you're ready to step up your training or take your game to the next level, then stop into Next Level Wellness or shop online at nxlevelwellness.com. Next Level Wellness, 10 Seneca Street, Hornell, or call 607-385-3188 for more info. Have you written a book? You can become a published author with Dorrance Publishing, the nation's oldest publishing services company. Countless authors have trusted Dorrance for nearly a 100 years to bring their book to the market. Our professional team will edit your text, design your book pages, and create an appealing, eye-catching custom cover. Plus, our authors benefit from a custom book promotion marketing campaign that makes your book available where people buy books, like Amazon and -and brick-and-mortar bookstores. So make this free call right now to claim your free free author's guide to publishing. Don't wait another day. Take one step closer to realizing your dream of becoming a published author and seeing your name in print. You've already written a book, so the next thing to do is make this free call right now to Dorn's Publishing and get your free guide to publishing. Call right now. 800-482-8399. 800-482-8399. That's 800-482-8399. It's amazing what a simple refresh can do to make a difference in your home. And Lowe's is here to help make it happen. Start by shopping our new wall tile selection with hundreds of mosaics, including modern blacks and blues. Marble mosaics starting at just $7.98. And finish off your project with dual scrub and stain-resistant Valspar Ultra Interior Paint Plus Primer starting at just $24.98 a gallon. Whatever updates you need to make today and every day, do it right for less. Start with Lowe's. Offers valid through two nineteen dollars U.S. only. Let's say you just bought a house. Bad news is, you're one step closer to becoming your parents. You'll proudly mow the lawn. Ask if anybody noticed you mowed the lawn. Tell people to stay off the lawn. Compare it to your neighbor's lawn. And complain about having to mow the lawn again. Good news is, it's easy to bundle home and auto through Progressive and save on your car insurance. Which, of course, will go right into the lawn. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company, affiliates, and other insurers. Discount not available in all states or situations.